Hey everyone, how are you doing? This is Vicious from Vicious Computers and thank you for joining me for a brand new detailed product review. Today I'm going to be taking a really close look at the Yeti Pro. This is a really great microphone made from Blue Microphone. So sit down and get comfortable and let's get into the detailed review. To fully understand the Yeti Pro, you must first understand the original Yeti, the microphone that started it all. I've owned and used the original Yeti for quite a while now, so I'm really familiar with all of its features, so let's go ahead and list those off. The first thing to understand is that it's a USB microphone. It's made to connect directly to your computer so you can have digital recording. To get the recording done, it uses three 14mm condenser capsules and offers you four different polar patterns so that you can record in a variety of different ways. It has stereo mode, cardioid mode, omnidirectional and bidirectional. Another great feature that it had that I've never seen on any other microphone is that it has its own built-in monitoring port. So you can plug in a pair of headphones and listen to yourself live while you speak. That way you know exactly what it sounds like at the time of recording and you don't have to go back and double check yourself all the time. As far as the quality of the digital files that it would save to your computer, it could go up to 16-bit and 48 kilohertz. So I'll tell you as someone who's owned and used the Yeti for over a year now that it's by far the best USB microphone I've ever run into. The quality is outstanding, but what really stands out about it to me is just how versatile it is. It's like the Swiss Army knife of microphones. The idea that it records directly to the computer lets me monitor myself while I'm recording and also has all the different recording patterns. There's no way you can compete with that against any other microphone because you'd have to buy several different pieces of equipment to get the same job done. So it's no surprise that when I saw the Yeti Pro announced one day that I was incredibly excited about it. I was just imagining what they could have done to make this really great microphone even better. So now enter the Yeti Pro. It has all the features that the original Yeti had, plus a whole lot more. So what are those differences? Let's go look at them side by side. So going into full detail and looking at the front of both of the microphones, the first and most obvious thing you're going to notice is the color difference. The Yeti Pro is now sporting a black finish, and instead of the silver for the metal, it's kind of got a little bit of a gold tint to it. But when you look at the interfaces on there, you'll see that they're exactly the same. They both still have the mute button and the volume knob. The volume knob is there to control the monitoring port, so when you have the headphones plugged in, you control how loud you hear yourself. Then when you go and take a look at the back of the microphone, you're going to see again that they're exactly the same. You have the gain knob there, which is where you control how loud the microphone records to your computer. And then you have the pattern selection for the type of recording you're doing, whether it be the stereo, cardioid, or etc. It's not until you get to the bottom of the microphones that you're going to spot the first and only real difference between the two physically. You still have the headphone jack there, 3.5 millimeter connection, the mini USB port where you connect it to your computer, the screw mount so you can hook it onto a regular microphone stand, but now the Yeti Pro has a new thing there. You're looking at an XLR connection. This is an analog balance connection so that you can interface the microphone to other audio equipment and not just your computer anymore. So you might now be asking yourself, is the only difference between the Yeti and the Yeti Pro the XLR connection on the bottom? No, that's actually not the only thing different. The Yeti Pro has extended the quality of the files that it records to 24 bits for the bit rate and up to 192 kilohertz for the sample rate. That's quite a bit higher than the original Yeti. So now that I've explained all the features and stats to you, let me go ahead and go into detail now on all these things a little bit more so you'll understand exactly how it all comes together to make a great microphone. So we'll start off with the recording patterns. Basically the recording pattern is how the microphone picks up sound, the technique that it uses and where it picks up the sound from. Normally when you buy a microphone, it does just one thing, and it does it in a very specialized way. But the Yeti actually has four different ways that it can record. First one we'll talk about is the stereo. Basically because it has three capsules inside, it can pick up sound from different locations and actually give you a true stereo recording. So if you send one person on one side of the microphone and one person onto the other side, and you're both talking, when you go to play back that recording and you have some headphones on, you'll actually hear the separation from left to right. The next one, and the one I use all the time, like I am right now while I'm doing this recording, is the cardioid. Basically, cardioid likes to pick up sound from the front of the microphone only and try to block out all the sound from behind it. It gives it a very directional pickup, and that helps reduce background noise, and it's really good for podcasting and other types of vocals. After that, you have almost the opposite of that, which is omnidirectional. Omnidirectional picks up sound from absolutely everywhere, 360 degrees. This is good if you're trying to pick up ambience, like you're trying to pick up environment noises on purpose. Omnidirectional is good for that. And the final recording pattern is bidirectional. 
Very similar to stereo, except that the way the Yeti does it, it's a little bit more directional than the stereo recording. It tries to pick up sound only from the far left and right of the microphone rather than anything in between, so it's a little bit more directional and it can give you a better stereo separation. Now let's talk about the quality of the files that the microphones can record. In a basic summarization, you can consider 44 kilohertz at the sample rate setting to be about CD quality audio. So when you're listening to music CD, which I'm sure you consider high quality, that's 44 kilohertz. When you move up to 48 kilohertz, which is where the original Yeti's at, that's considered DVD quality audio. Then anything above that, now you're moving into the realm of studio grade recording. And the Yeti Pro goes all the way up to 192 kilohertz and 24 bit. So it's definitely packing a lot of muscle when it comes to the quality of the files that it can record. With sample rates and bit rates that high, it's definitely up to par to be present inside of a professional recording studio. And now finally we can talk about the XLR connection. This is a balanced connection, so it's made to be able to run long distances with the XLR cable. It gives you a balanced signal, it prevents any kind of interference and feedback coming into the recording. And it's usually what you can hook into professional audio equipment like a mixing console or some kind of amplifier. This really excited me quite a bit because I already thought of the Yeti as the Swiss Army knife of microphones, but now with the Yeti Pro adding the XLR, it's like adding another 10 blades in there. So now the microphone can do even more than it could before. And since owning the Yeti Pro, I now own a mixing console as well, so I can make use of these XLR connections. So now here's where my review really gets into the reviewing aspect of taking a look at the product. Anybody could have told you the specs on these products, they could have told you how they work, but why should you buy it and how should you use it? That's the real question. I think a lot of people are going to be fooled by the idea that this is called the Yeti Pro because I think too many consumer products out there throw the Pro name into it as a way of saying upgraded. If you see a Pro version of a camera or a Pro version of something else, it usually just means it's better in some way. And if you really want to have a good version of it, you should buy it. But Blue did not actually misuse that term on the Yeti Pro. It really does mean professional. Doesn't mean just get the better version of the Yeti, it means professional Yeti. And let me explain that a little bit further. Applying a, a little bit of common sense to my technical knowledge, let's talk about the quality that we were talking about earlier. The original Yeti already goes up to DVD quality recording. What would the normal person be using the Yeti for day to day? Maybe VIOP like Skype or video games? Or maybe they like to make YouTube videos like I do. All of those things will not even give you DVD quality audio once you've either uploaded your video to YouTube or you've sent your voice over Skype or over your video games. So the original Yeti already has more than enough built-in quality to perform those tasks and you would gain no additional quality by having the higher rates of the Yeti Pro. The other thing is that the Yeti Pro gives you XLR, but your computer does not have XLR connections on it, nor does any of your other regular everyday stuff. Mostly people in the music industry or some kind of recording setup have the XLR available to them. So buying the Yeti Pro to use at home with your computer is not going to give you any immediate benefit that you can take advantage of. Now with that said, I'm going to give you some really cool insider information that I have not seen in pretty much any other reviewer mention. There's more differences between the Yeti and the Yeti Pro than meet the eye. The ones I listed earlier were just the common ones. Here's the real stuff you should know. The original Yeti was a plug and play USB microphone. Just connected to your Mac or connected to your PC. It automatically installed generic USB audio drivers and it worked right out of the box. The Yeti Pro, however, due to its higher quality, requires its own dedicated drivers that you have to download and install to your computer. That might not seem like much, but you might be in a situation where you're taking the microphone with you to use on someone else's computer and you don't have access to those drivers and you might find yourself unable to use the microphone. Another thing to keep in mind that you cannot use the XLR and USB connections at the same time. You have to use one or the other. So if you have it plugged into your computer with USB and then you want to do some kind of XLR recording with it at the same time, you can't do that. You have to actually unplug one and then plug in the other to make that swap. When you are using XLR, you are required to have phantom power because this is a condenser microphone. So getting some cheaper XLR connection to your computer might not work because it might not provide the phantom power you need. Another useful thing to keep in mind, and one thing I do miss now that I use the microphone in XLR mode, is that the mute button in the front no longer functions. That worked only with the USB mode. When I'm doing games and I'm talking to friends over, say, Mumble and Skype, sometimes I have to call for, want to mute the microphone for some reason, and I no longer have access to that mute button. And the last difference, and by far the most important thing I can share with you, is that the Yeti Pro 
has about 12 decibels lower recording gain, meaning the volume that the microphone records when it's in USB mode. This is a really, really big deal and something that you should really take to heart before you purchase the Yeti Pro if you're gonna be using it in USB mode. Basically with the original Yeti, a comfortable recording level for me was the gain turned halfway up. It gave me enough volume to be picked up easily without being too quiet and it wasn't close to clipping. When I hooked up the Yeti Pro for the first time, I actually thought it was defective because I turned my gain to the exact same place I used to have it and I found I could barely hear myself in recordings. To obtain the exact same level of recording that I had before, I had to turn the gain on the Yeti Pro all the way up to the very max level. This means I was limited because I had no more gain to turn up should I need it for a quieter recording or to be further away from the microphone. Uh, I went and googled the problem and I found out it wasn't a problem at all. It's actually a design intention from Blue because this microphone was intended for professional things such as instrumental recordings or singing where it would be subjected to higher sound pressure levels than you do when you're sitting at your desk talking into your microphone. So this is a really tall tale sign that this indeed was intended for a professional use microphone and not for your everyday use on your computer. Now with all that said, it sounds like I'm trying to say don't get the Yeti Pro and go get the original Yeti. That's actually not true. I use my Yeti Pro every day. It is my favorite microphone and I'm very happy to have it. But I just wanted to make sure you know about these few differences because for your particular use, the original Yeti might actually fit you better. If you're doing just YouTube videos, podcasting, voice over IP, video game talk, then the original Yeti is going to fit you better. But if you ever think you're going to move into the professional realm of recording or get some equipment that uses XLR connections, then I think the Yeti Pro is well worth the extra cost. I myself personally take advantage of the extra versatility much more than the extra quality. Because I do YouTube videos and stuff, I don't need 192 kilohertz and 24 bit. But because I have the XLR connections, I can use a mixer board now. So when I'm doing live streams like I do over Justin TV or Twitch TV, I can actually control with my mixer board live the volume of my recording, the volume of my game sounds, and the volume of my friends talking to me over the uh, like TeamSpeak or Ventrilo servers. So that extra versatility is amazing and it's something the original Yeti couldn't have given to me. So in my particular case, the Yeti Pro is well worth it. But I honestly don't use the USB mode anymore. And I think if I was to go and reevaluate myself, had I intended to use only USB, then the original Yeti would have fit me better as well. So I think in closing, I can say that the Yeti is obviously a very awesome microphone. If you want to hear the quality of the sound, you've been listening to it for this entire review. This was done directly through the microphone with no post-processing. I'm not going to enhance any of the vocals. I'm not going to do any noise reduction. This is just going to be a straight up recording. You can hear that it gets a nice full range of sound. This is going to be done with the cardioid mode if you're wondering about that. Uh, I think that both the Yeti and the Yeti Pro are well worth the money they cost. I can't think of any other microphone that can even come close to competing with the value that you get with either one of them and that you're going to be happy with your purchase no matter which one you choose. So everyone, this was Vicious. I really, really hope you enjoyed the review. I put some extra time and effort into this one because I was really, really happy to finally bring you a review of this product. If you enjoyed it, just please say thanks by giving it a thumbs up. I will be bringing you more reviews like this in the future, so if you want to make sure you don't miss those, then subscribe to the channel. This is now pretty much a tech-only channel. Also, before you go, make sure you go ahead and check out the video description, because I'm going to put some useful stuff down there for you. I'll have stuff like the links to where you can go ahead and purchase one of these microphones if you'd like to pick one up for yourself. Go ahead and link to the official Blue site, where you can see all the official information on these microphones, and anything else I find relevant for the review. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. I really enjoyed myself. This was Vicious, and I'll see you guys next time.